D hop signing with the Titans. I, it's pretty simple for this for me. Uh, the move that cost John Robinson, the general manager, his job a few years back is when the Titans got rid of AJ Brown. You plug and play D hop and you've got a nice tandem with Derrick Henry D hop in Tennessee. The question I have now really at this point is who's going to be the quarterback throwing the, throwing the football because yeah, you've got Tannehill. You have a little bit of a ceiling to say, okay, he can take you to the playoffs relying on King Henry, but He's probably not going to take you over the top to win a Super Bowl. So then you got Will Levis, the rookie out of Kentucky, coming in this year. Don't forget uh, about Malik Willis as well, who was a rookie last year, who now appears to be like the third string quarterback in Tennessee. So I'm not worried about D Hop. I'm not worried about King Henry. What I'm what I'm curious is is who's going to be the quarterback this season come week 17, week 18, if Tennessee's trying to make a playoff push. That's the bigger question I have with DeAndre Hopkins going to the Titans. And that's the issue. The court, they got a hell of a coach. They got a hell of a defense. Mm-hmm. Coach, the coach is damn br- brilliant. He can't get his quarterback situation right. Mm-hmm. Can't get it right. I mean, you got Tannehill. Tannehill is going to be Tannehill. That means he'll get you to the playoffs. Don't ask for nothing more than that. Um, you got Will Levis. We're going to see if he can even get on the field, if he's even going to be on the roster. Um, and then you got the young kid you just drafted this year. So uh, uh, Levis and then uh, Malik Willis is Malik, Malik Willis. I'm sorry, Malik Willis. You're fine. It, it's just like coach. The most important position y'all can't get right. Y'all can't y'all can't get the most important position right. You go back to back drafting quarterbacks. So I, y'all y'all missing on that the most important position. So other than coaching, you just listen to players. You listen to other quarterbacks talk about going against Rabel. They're like, man, you're a hell of a coach. Like, mm-hmm. You know one thing, it's going to be hard beating them boys. But then you go on the flip side, on the offensive side, other than King Henry, man, it's just difficult. I mean, but getting DeAndre Hopkins, um, he always open. You know, DeAndre always open. He's one of the most underrated, I think, um, receivers in the league. He's not going to wow you with speed, but he, throw anything around his area code and see what happens. He's going to come down with the ball every time. He's a new Larry Fitzgerald. That's exactly what he is. You throw wow. anything around his area code, he coming down. Same way with Fitz. You throw anything around Fitz, he catching the ball. That's DeAndre. That's DeAndre. And give the best corners hell every week. Every week. I like that high praise coming from you because I know Larry Larry Fitzgerald, he had a stretch there, Ike, where he had his way with anybody. Line him up against anybody. And you talk about another player that's going to go to Canton, Larry Fitzgerald, like I no mean, doubt in my mind. I mean, look at what DeAndre did with Houston. Boy had about seven quarterbacks. Went to the Pro Bowl every year. <laughs> how, how you go to the Pro Bowl with seven different quarterbacks? <laughs> every year. <clears throat> like I said, he always over. Yeah. Yeah. Ike, uh, Tennessee, Couple, two things, and we'll go to the next topic. You mentioned Vrabel putting his team in positions to win, manipulating the clock, understanding the rules of the game to say, we need to conserve time. We need to waste time. We need to conserve a timeout. Being able to manipulate the rules, purposefully take penalties within the confines of the game, putting his team in positions to win when it's the difference is marginal. I noticed that with him, number one. And then we always talk about Cam Hayward on the Steelers defense. Jeffrey Simmons up front for the Titans. No. As good as there is in the league, he belongs in that no. same conversation with Aaron Donald and with Cam no. Hayward as well. No, 100%. Simmons is a guy named Donald. Uh, he, he, another one. Don't get the recognition he's supposed to get. But ask anybody who played on the offensive side about him, they're going to say, man, that boy, hell. It'd be hard for me to play. I got I to gotta bring my A game every time I go against Simmons. That's a must. If not, he's just going to make me look bad. The Monday – the Monday morning meetings with coach and, and when the team watch me, it ain't gonna look good. But Simmons, Simmons is like that. I kind of honestly think, like, Coach Vrabel don't mind taking pen- taking penalties. Um, he don't mind the offense getting close to that red zone. He takes field goals all day because he knows how small the windows are in the red zone, then getting bombed on. So them penalties don't bother him at all. You know, Coach Coach Rabel have a, a different – and this is my personal opinion. I just think they have a different mindset. Let them get to the 15 or the 20. You know, they're going to kick a field goal. Um, they ain't going to be able to throw the ball the way they need to throw the ball. They ain't going to run on us, and we just take field goals. And that's my honest opinion 
on how I feel like Coach Vrabel and his thoughts when it comes down to the defense. And it just makes a lot of sense.